Hello again YouTube, this is Dr. Joel Swalsh, also known as At11 on the Union server of City of Heroes. And uh, this is it, this is um, the final character um, that I'll be showing you uh, of my list of characters on Union and in City of Heroes. We started with 11 and we're going to end with 11. This is the uh, the final version of 11 that I had in game, uh, which was a villain side and a stalker. Full name Hono Karai 11, which uh, translated from Japanese is Dark Flame. So, the quote unquote evil version of 11. Um, so, you can see there's a bit of a heavy influence of Akuma from Street Fighter in this, um, and certainly that's also the case law wise as well. But, um, yeah, start with 11, end with 11. Um, so, this was. Um, essentially the I always actually said this was a what if m with my mates I didn't actually really want to explain too detailed the law because I did actually have the intention that if I was uh, getting into the role play scene a bit more if there was a situation where I was looking to either do a complete reboot of the character or I'll just wait for this loading Yeah, if if there was a situation where I was essentially going to be quote unquote rebooting my characters, or ironically enough, the situation was the game was going to be shut down, then I would instigate a sort of storyline and plot, which would essentially be the beginning of the end of um, all my characters. Um, so, um, just I'll explain about. Um, uh, the power set just uh, first before we um, I'll get into the lore anyway but um, so in obviously to keep with the fact that it's still the same character as it was hero side just in stalker form it's still uh, martial arts um, super reflexes the difference here now is that um, actually it's um, on a stalker oh, there we go we've just uh, missed on the first one but never mind so you'll see essentially it's pretty much the same animation and everything um, as um, the scrapper version that was the the main character, as it were. Um, it's just that it's also it's now in stalker format, so obviously we've got the hide effect that come in. And um, stalkers didn't have anything in the way of AOE, so the um, the sweeping kick was sacrificed in order to fit in the assassin's blow uh, instead, which I used the alternative animation for the single punch to the heart. Because uh, the original animation, which was a two-fisted pump to the chest, was a, a bit sort of uh, iffy, to be quite honest. So, um, so yeah, exactly the same concept, really, just as any other stalker. Just you know, you work out a hide um, and do some re do some real damage. So, I would have actually, again, I would have loved to have uh, incarnated and ioed out this character. It was an intention to do so, and doing so it probably would have been the most ridiculous character out the set it probably would have said it would have been my most powerful um because the defense would be at the point of there's literally very little that's actually going to you know get through anything that does i'd be able to heal instantly with probably one of the heal incarnates but obviously they've got to see him first because he's in hide and we do you know continue massive damage and whatnot so he would have been essentially the top tier of the character um, even though essentially it's no longer the the, the hero um, which was the you know the original essentially so um, yeah so the law of the character then so I never really um, I kinda hinted at this with a lot of my mates but didn't really outright say this is the actual player through um, and I might it might be a mistake to actually come up with the law as well um, here in case I actually do do something with the characters and and and, and do you know more stories and whatnot, or either video or whatever. I'm not really sure. I just don't know. Um, I've got ideas of you know maybe doing something creative if someone will let me or if I find the opportunity to do so. But um, in either case, essentially, just I'll I'll let the cat out of the bag. So. The idea of the the, the, the story um, of how it all ends essentially from the characters is that, as I mentioned in the previous video, the the 
Eleven's main uh, arch nemesis is Sensua Toku. Sensua Toku was the one responsible for um, murdering Eleven's family, which made Eleven, you know, the miserable get that he is. Um, and always constantly angry and, and aggressive and this, that and the other. Eleven, though, could never beat Hitoku in straight one-on-one -on -one fight. Um, he was always able to stop Hitoku's plans in some fashion, but he could never beat him in one-on-one -on -one combat. I always said if the, the, mo the, 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 the moment that it happened, the, the story that gets released where Eleven finally beats and essentially exacts his revenge uh, on Hitoku by killing him in Mortal Kombat, because that would always be how it turns out, Eleven would not show mercy towards him, that um, that would be the beginning of the end. Because the only way Eleven would be able to beat Hitoku was if he got himself in a position where he would go beyond what was deemed acceptable in his martial arts. So, kind of borrowed the, the concept of, um, like, Akuma, uh, where he obviously embraced the Dark Ado Akuma and, and turned out the way he did. Uh, whereas obviously Ryu and Ken were sheltered away from that and, and didn't want to be involved too heavily in, in that. So um, uh, the, I, I, the idea I had with Eleven is that he would go down the same route. In, in his, he, he would eventually find out. Uh, Hitoku would eventually admit that he was the one responsible for murdering Eleven's family. Eleven would just go crazy with trying to beat Hitoku to the point where he would start learning aspects of his martial art that would be essentially probably go what would be considered going beyond the pale as it were and going down a path that you know could essentially lead him um, to places you know to really dark places um, I think we're going to be done with this one yep yeah. the fire another mission uh, will I still talk on Yeah, so, um, eventually there would be, um, a battle between Eleven and Otoku, with the, with the premise that they both basically say, this is it, this is the last fight, we are going to end it here. Hitoku never really wanted to, uh, to, to, to kill Eleven, he always wanted to keep him, um, alive, um, um, and essentially, you know, keep him in perpetual torment um, you know forever you know for all eternity essentially um, Eleven though always wanted to basically challenge Hitoku in combat and and in Mortal Kombat specifically and basically kill him uh, you know to, you know straight eye for an eye revenge against him so there is a final battle and Hitoku is finally defeated but He's defeated, you know, um, scared and horrified as to um, Eleven starting to actually turn into this form, almost where uh, he's essentially gone down that path um, in order to destroy him. And Hitoku, you know, in his last moments, is like, "Oh, that, oh, um, that, that's uh, not right, not right at all. This is, this is going to be, uh, you know." This is going to hurt. We're, we're going to end up with a situation where chaos is going to reign supreme. So, um, Atoka was killed. Um, everyone thinks that Eleven is now going to essentially be calmer, but actually he doesn't. He keeps getting worse and worse in, obviously, um, wanting to continue using this newfound um, ability that he's, that he's got to the point where he essentially he no longer um, is um, the, the the Eleven that was, that at least had some compassion in him to obviously be a hero and, and help others. He literally got to the point of, I am now a creature that is only living to fight, and, and that's it, and that's what he became. Um, so he essentially turned into this form, which like I said, it, it borrows a lot, if not outright, just nicks the, the sort of concept from Akuma from, from Tree Fighter to, you know, very similar setup. Um, so he ends up essentially no longer part of the group. The te the rest of the team is somewhat um, struggling to cope that he's not there. Um, both in the sense of he isn't around, obviously, as a major factor in, in helping out the team, and they're also a bit shaking, particularly Venu, um, as to how he's turned. And one by one, the characters 
in the Dunham group all essentially get killed either directly by Eleven's hands um, because he's challenged them, uh, which would be the case with Prince Bishop, well, <laughs> sort of. Um, I was had a little thing where Bishop somehow would still survive, um, but um, uh, either as a result of Eleven or essentially because um, the team's no longer in the best position that um, essentially they all slowly get uh, bumped off. Um, it would eventually lead to a situation where you have um, the only two left literally is Venu and Eleven. They're the only two left. And Venu is in a bad state because Bishop is supposedly dead along with everyone else and she's gone mad um, herself with with angst um, and rage that uh, Eleven's done this. And so she's basically decided, right, I didn't want to do this but I've, you left me no choice. So what happens is, is that Eleven, uh, Eleven and Venu fight in Mortal Kombat and it's the premise of it will either finish off the remainder of the Dunham group and then Eleven is essentially got nothing left to prove and will just continue on looking for whatever challenges are ahead of him. Venu obviously looks to just simply end end it all and um, you know, uh, put Eleven, uh, you know, put a stop to Eleven and, and, and his madness. So Venu wins and um, actually manages to kill Eleven um, and puts an end to it all. Um, and as it transpires, that's actually the reason why she was condemned to Earth because it said you've manipulated in human affairs and it's ended up, you know, destroying, um, you know, um, many lives. And Venu thought it was lies at the time of the trial, and it wasn't therefore saw that this was always going to happen, that she was going to essentially be the one that destroyed Eleven, and um, or at least lead Eleven down to the path that he ended up down, and leading to the death of him and everyone else associated with him, uh, with only her left. So she then realises actually that, that that was actually why she was punished. Um, and is essentially left to, you know, carry on uh, as a as a human woman, you know, on her own, to uh, protect the um, you know Earth as best she can. So that was essentially how it would all end for the for Eleven and the Dunham group. That was essentially the story I've I've had in mind for for quite a number of years. That uh, Eleven would always he would always end up this way. There was there was no way he would ever calm down find redemption or this that and the other he would always end up this way um, you know one way or another this is always destined to happen essentially so which is interesting because I always had people say well you know you, you can loosen up the character a little bit and, and this that and the other and it, it, and it wasn't so much that they were saying in character they were actually saying like you know say well can you not let him loosen up a bit because he's a bit of a misguide I said no that's the whole point of the character you're missing this is the point I didn't want to give the game away too much in the same time of saying there is a reason for this it's because at some point he will suffer for it yes you know people say well you know it it makes for a very horrible character it, to, to be around I said yeah that's the point at some point he's going to become a creature that is abhorred um, literary creature he will not be considered a human anymore almost he literally is like a, a fighting demon because all he cares about is fighting that is the whole point of it really so that was there was that was always the intention behind it really so um the character was played a lot in game just as I was just because there was times where I figured I would I would actually you know want to play as a stalker rather than the scrapper just as a bit of a change it was a very very powerful character would have been even more ridiculously powerful with an IO and incarnate build but again never really had the chance and again it's a shame but you know not much I can do really um but um, certainly if the opportunity arises again in the future then I will definitely remake the character and whatnot. whether I end up going down the route of actually playing it out in roleplay or whatnot. well, don't know, might do um, but um, yeah, I think we'll just, I think we'll just go, go through and, and, and finish uh, this mission off and be done with it so yeah, that was the that was essentially the, the, the law behind um, uh, essentially, well, how this particular version level comes about and how it all ends, essentially, because that's that was the whole that was the whole concept. It this was the character that essentially how it, how it would end.
um, and it would always turn out this way. So, um, so there we go. So, uh, I think this is the final. Uh, yep, that's the final one. So there we are. That is that is it really. That is all my characters um, in City of Heroes uh, in their various archetypes and forms really. So um, this is an obviously the last video. Like I say, I I do plan to record um, essentially the final moments on Saturday morning. Um, so here in the UK, it's been worked out and confirmed. Actually, I've just seen uh, a post made on uh, the City Heroes Facebook page conf confirmation they put a uh, an event page on a time converter site to actually say right this is the the event time and uh, in our local time and therefore this is the time in your local area and for us in the UK if anyone's watching and interested as to what it is it's um, the server is shutting down on Saturday the 1st of December at 8 o'clock a.m. in the morning um, which uh, corresponds to midnight in Pacific daytime. I think PDT is. I think that's what it's referred to in America. Um, so yeah, this isn't going to be the last video in the series as such. It's um, it's uh, going to be um, the, the 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 final video will be the actual moments of the of the server shutdown. I'll be in Atlas Park, seeing what's there and whatnot. Um, if there's anyone going to be there um, with final comments, if if necessary. Uh, I'm still um and ring as to whether I'm actually going to do videos um, uh, essentially playing through some arcs. I had a, a mind to go through my arc that I created in the Mission Architect uh, with Bishop uh, and then maybe um, go through the signature story arc um, Who Will Die all, all episodes um, with a character. I was thinking Bishop again thematically with the way that story plays out either that or 11 I don't really know I hadn't really decided whether I was actually going to go ahead with that or not it, it really just I don't know how it plays out because um, I don't know if you see because if other people have obviously recorded the arcs then they're probably better suited for you know they're, they're the videos I don't I don't really know I'll say how it plays out I'll say what other people say uh, that I'll talk to if anyone wants to leave a comment uh, or message to say no we really like to see that arc played as you know bishop or eleven whatever you know let me know um, if that's the case uh, so it goes if I do they'll be up there they'll probably be without commentary I'll just let them play through without actually adding, uh, any uh, any commentary other than just saying at the beginning what I'm doing and who with um, otherwise if I don't, the next video will be the final video on Saturday morning. So, um, but there we go. That's all the characters. Um, so yeah, I'll probably get, like I said, I'll probably give final thoughts on the on the final moments on the Saturday morning, and uh, I'll uh, we'll leave it there. So uh, yep, yeah, this is Jonas Welsh, also known as At Levin, signing off, and uh, I'll see you either for uh, some arc videos or for the final final day. See you in a bit.